Now will this be enough nitrogen to get a good grow out of corn? I guess only time will tell. We're kind of breaking our own rules here as far as the... What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having an amazing day. It is Thursday, August 3rd here in South Georgia. Supposed to get some rain tonight or in the morning. So that means it's gonna be a great afternoon to side dress this blue corn here behind me and get a warm season cover crop plant. So in our oldest no-till plot here, we've got this McCormick's Blue Giant corn planted, an entire 30 by 35 plot of it planted on double rows. Now considering the fact that we haven't fed this corn that much so far, with the exception of some of that coop grow that we put down at pre-plant, it's looking pretty good. The color on the leaves is looking pretty nice and green at this point. Now we are battling a worm issue in here. I need to give it an application of spinosad this evening, even though it's going to rain. They're doing some pretty strong damage on some of these plants, as you can see there. And I'm still battling a little bit of a pigweed issue in this plot. I must have hand pulled at least a thousand pigweeds out of here so far. Just trying to chip away at it. Still got a few more popping up there. But we have significantly put a dent in the pigweed population in this plot. Now normally I would have already side dressed and healed my corn when it's this tall, but there's a good reason I haven't. So this past weekend I was out of town at a fig meeting, got back on Sunday. When I got back it looked like we had gotten a pretty good rain and a pretty good storm. A lot of this corn was kind of blown to the side a little bit. It wasn't standing upright like it is now and it would have made it tough to heal like it was. So I had to wait a few days for it to stand back up upright now we can side dress and heal it now normally we always side dress corn at this stage with a straight nitrogen fertilizer we've used a lot of the nature safe 1300 in the past i don't have any of that at the moment don't have time to wait on getting some and we got to get this healed today before it gets too tall so we're going to use what we have which is some of this coop grow fertilizer here we've already gave it some of that at planting about to give it one more dose today now what I'm about to tell you here is top secret information. Don't share it with anyone. You won't find it on the back of this Coop Grow bag. You won't find it on the Coop Grow page on our website. This stuff does work a lot better if you pour it in a dog's bucket before you put it out. So we're going to go up and down this corn plot and put about a scoop here down both sides of each double row. We're going to try to sprinkle it as close to these plants as we can. Then we'll just take our rake here and heal this corn. Just mound up some soil around those plants. So we're covering that fertilizer. We're hopefully smothering out some of those baby pigweeds. And we're also giving some extra support to these corn stalks here in case we get some more high winds. And so that's what it looks like after we heal it. Now for the sake of time and for the sake of my sanity, I'm gonna wait till later this afternoon to do those other seven rows when it's not so hot. Now will this be enough nitrogen to get a good grow out of corn? I guess only time will tell. We're kind of breaking our own rules here as far as the total percentages of nitrogen that we normally use on a corn grow out, but you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. And hopefully it works here. We did have the chickens on here for a couple rounds before we planted this corn. So we should have some nitrogen left over from that. Hopefully that plus the coop grow, maybe a couple injections of AgriThrive will be enough. And now for the second thing on our to-do list today, which is planting a warm season cover crop in this empty plot here behind me. So this is where we had our spring planting of sweet corn where we grew that Eden variety. After it was done, I mowed it. Some of the stalks didn't get chopped up. They just kind of got pushed over. We put the chicken tractor on this plot for one round, helped clean it up a little bit. I came out here earlier today, raked out the rest of those dead corn stalks, and I ran over it one time with the tiller. This soil is soft enough. If I was planting anything but soybeans today, I probably could have just wheel hoed it and not tilled it. But since we're planting soybeans, I needed to fluff it up just a little more. So I know I've told y'all this before, but it just absolutely breaks my heart to ride down the road and see folks that have let their garden just grow up into a weedy jungle this time of year. I know it's hot. I know you don't want to be out there. I know you don't want to fool with it. 
but if you're not going to be using your garden this time of year don't let the weeds take over plant you a warm season cover crop just to kind of hold that spot keep the weeds from thriving and then you can return to use it again in the fall and you won't have near as high of a weed seed bank when you do get ready to use it again so there are lots of really good reasons to grow cover crops, specifically warm season cover crops in this case. Number one is probably weeds. Weeds really thrive this time of year, especially when we're getting some rain every few days. So the cover crop planted really dense like we're going to do today keeps any weeds from thriving in there. That's probably reason number one to use them. Number two would be erosion. Now my land here is pretty flat but if your garden is kind of on a hill you probably have to worry about the soil washing away from time to time. Cover crops can put a nice dense mat of roots over that soil so you don't lose a lot of it during heavy rains. And then a third good reason to plant cover crops would be nitrogen fixation or nutrient scavenging. So legume cover crops like the soybeans we're going to be planting today will fix atmospheric nitrogen and add it to our garden soil. Other warm season cover crops like sorghum sedan grass for example puts down these really deep roots, scavenges nutrients from way down deep in the soil profile and then when you incorporate that cover crop into the soil those nutrients are then available kind of at the top of the soil profile for whatever vegetables you plant next. And a fourth good reason to plant cover crops is building organic matter. So down here in the south where we have these sandy soils, they don't hold organic matter very well. It burns up pretty quickly in our sandy soils. So we always have to be constantly adding more organic matter to our soils because that organic matter is what helps the soils retain nutrients so it all doesn't just leach out. And then the fifth reason, which is not going to apply to everyone, but it's certainly a great reason for us, these cover crops provide some excellent forage for our chickens. So once these soybeans get nice and established in this plot, we'll put our chicken tractor on top of it, move it once a day around this plot here. The chickens will eat that cover crop. We won't have to spend as much on chicken food, and we'll also get some fertilization from the chickens in return. So the specific cover crop variety we're planting today is called Laredo Forage Soybeans. And we actually grew these last year right here in this raised bed plot. Grew it out, let the chickens forage it before we tilled all that in and converted that plot to raised bed. So it performed well last year for us. That's why we're growing it again this year. Now, as I suggested earlier, it has been my experience over the last couple of years that these soybeans germinate a lot better when they're raked into some fluffed up soils a little bit. If we were just planting something like sorghum sedan grass, I probably wouldn't have tilled that plot. These things seem to do a little bit better when they're raked in a little deeper. Now, when we're talking cover crops, we always get a lot of questions about what cover crop should I plant? When should I plant it? All that kind of stuff and so if you have any additional questions you can put them in the comments below and i'll try to answer them but i would also highly suggest reaching out to the folks at green cover seed that's where we get our cover crop seed from they have a lot of really good information on their website that tells you the differences between cover crops which ones are better for forage which ones are better for adding nitrogen all that good stuff now one thing to note though about the Green Cover Seed website, they are in Nebraska, I believe, and so sometimes not all of their recommendations jive with our weather down here in South Georgia. There's been a couple cover crops, warm season cover crops I've tried that just didn't like our heat down here at all. But I'll tell you the ones that I do really like. So we like the Laredo soybeans that we're planting today, obviously, or we wouldn't be planting them, right? I really like sorghum sedan grass because you can plant that stuff really, really thick, get a nice dense jungle of vegetation and a weed can't even think about growing through that stuff. Pearl millet is another good one. We grew some of that last warm season. And then you've got the red ripper peas. That's a really good one. You can grow that one by itself or you can grow it in combination with something like sorghum sedan grass. And because it's a climbing cow pea, it will kind of climb up some of those sorghum sedan grass stalks. Now there are two warm season cover crops that I don't particularly care for, not because they're not good for the soil and not good to plant, they just don't necessarily work well with my system. 
So one of those is buckwheat. Now buckwheat can be great for your soil, but it just grows out too fast for me down here in the middle of the summer. A lot of times it'll start flowering just three to four weeks after planting. That doesn't give me enough time to graze it with the chickens. And it's just not a long enough window for me. I need at least a good two month window from planting that cover crop to when I'm gonna have to turn it over and do something else with it. And then the second one that I don't particularly like would be sun hemp, another great one for your soil. It can add a lot of nitrogen to your soil, but sun hemp stalks can be mighty, mighty fibrous. And you really need like a bush hog or something to mow them down once it gets full grown. I don't have that type of equipment, so I don't grow sun hemp. Now I always plant these cover crops way thicker than the recommended seeding rate. One, because we need them to hold up to multiple rounds of grazing. Two, because like I said earlier, our ultimate goal here is weed suppression. So that's why we want them planted really, really thick. So I'm gonna pour our soybean seeds here in our dog's bucket. And because this is a legume, we need to add some inoculant here. I think this is enough for 50 pounds. We've only got 10 pounds here. I should have mentioned, I usually go with 10 pounds of seed per 30 by 35 plot. So what we'll do is just get a little bit of this inoculant. No thing is too much, but we don't want to waste it. So I'm just gonna dump a little bit of that in there. probably good enough so what that does is provide these soybeans the necessary bacteria so they can fix their own nitrogen once we put that dry inoculant powder in there just want to add a little bit of water don't need a whole lot and then we're just going to mix it all around so all those seeds get coated with that inoculant and you probably already knew this, but these cover crop seeds will germinate a lot better if you inoculate them in a dog's bucket. So now we're going to take our 10 pound of seed and stroll them over this plot. And now we've got all our seeds scattered down there. We're just going to take this little landscape rake and just walk up and down this plot, kind of covering up these seeds. And boom, just like that, we're done. Got it nice and smoothed over and it's ready for water. So we'll want to keep consistent moisture in this plot for at least two to three days for some good germination. I'm going to keep a close eye on the forecast. I may water it some tonight. No point in watering it right now and wasting a bunch of water during the heat of the day. But I may give it a little splash tonight. Hopefully we get some more rain tomorrow, maybe a little bit Saturday. And usually three days of nice consistent moisture. As hot as it is out here, this stuff will start popping. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Don't forget to check out our affiliate links and coupons in the description below. Also go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com, where you can find our fig trees and that coop grow fertilizer. And if you want to know more about all the wonderful benefits of growing cover crops in your backyard garden, check out this video right here, one we did last year. I think it was actually on this plot right here as well. But we'll break it down even more than we did earlier to help you understand why you should be growing cover crops in your backyard garden. So check that out, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.